jeepers. You're listening to Smash or Pass with JB, Millie, and Smash. Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the JB Hello. and Millie channel. Today, as always, we're joined by Rihanna. Hi. And we have the incredible pleasure today of being able to speak with Gary Chalk. Oh, how are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> Now, we are particularly excited today to be speaking with Gary Chalk in that they have an incredible and extensive profile on IMDb with over 400 acting credits, notably some childhood favourites for especially NOJB with Sonic, Marley and Me is on there as well, and I guess most prominently for today and on this channel is Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Begins, so we've got some exciting questions about all of those things, and JB, I think you've got the first question, right? Yeah. I'll do my best to answer them. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So my first yeah, question is that you have acting credits dating um, back from the late 70s and still continue to have new and exciting projects upcoming. So what yes. started your love for acting? Well, it all started it all started when I was very young. I think I was about seven or no, eight. I was eight years old and I did my very first dramatic production. It was called The Shoemaker and the elves, and I played the shoemaker. And I was doing this uh, thing about, you know, the cobbler with the elves coming to make the shoes. And I thought it was, I was in front of an audience and they were watching Wrapped as we enacted this play. And I thought, oh, this is kind of fun. I like this. And, and I've always uh, liked the movies and whatnot. And uh, then one day I was, uh, my teacher uh, at school, because uh, uh, always had me pegged as a singer, because I was always a really good singer, and still do sing for, you know, I sing for a living even sometimes. And um, they put me on this choir, this boy, the, uh, the uh, Kiwanis Boys Choir, and uh, we got to sing on television on a show called Ron Morier's Saturday Party. It was a Christmas thing. And we got to get, you know, dressed up and make up and went to the television studio and the lights and all the cameras going. And they were big, these giant size cameras. This is 1964 or something, 63. And, uh, and Ron Morier, who I watch on TV, I used to watch that Saturday show every day because, well, every Saturday because it had games and contests and they gave away lots of potato chips and and uh, they showed cartoons and whatnot. And um, ugh, right in the middle of my thing. Anyway, um, the, uh, I, I thought this is, this is what I love. And uh, I've been pretty well, not so much performing so much because I thought it was just a fun thing. But when I got into high school, my literature teacher, I was reading the Barretts of Wimpole Street, the play. Uh, called the Barrett's of Wimpole Street, and uh, I was I read the a part because we were reading it out loud in school, and the whole class was like dead quiet, and the teacher was watching, and he was just like he's going, "Holy moly, where did you learn how to do that?" And I said, "I don't know, I'm just doing it." And he's going, "Well, that was fabulous." So I thought, "Okay, I'm pegged." And uh, I never did it for a living until um, I turned about 1977. I was in theater school, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a very short story about that. I went into, I, was, I wanted to be an English teacher and an anthropology teacher. So I went to back to university, because that's what I wanted to do. And uh, one of my projects was to go down and... Uh, look at some plays at the theater department at the college and then do our own play. And we did a play by Joe Orton called What the Butler Saw, which was hilariously funny, I gotta say. And I went down to watch this play and it was at Mice and Men and the, and the, the play was fantastic. The production values were fantastic. The acting was fantastic. I said, this is what I wanna do. So I auditioned for the next term in school and uh, did my bit and did my thing. The, the old English guy who was run the place, whose name was Anthony Holland, uh, uh, well-known actor, he, um, he looks up at me and he goes, well, 
you know, you got some talent, don't matter, some. All right, you're in. And um, I, that, there started my career. And then I realized later they only took 15 students every term from across the country. So I thought, well, because if I'd have known that, I'd be, I would have never gotten there. I would have been so nervous. But uh, I got in and did really well and uh, started my professional career in 1978 uh, with another Joe Wharton play called Lute, which we toured across Canada. Then I did children's theater and musical theater. I was a big indie musical theater. There you go. That's the short one. <laughs> That's amazing. And you've mentioned some really iconic things. That, like the Elves and the Shoemaker was something that I, it was a book that I had at my grand's house. And it was just one of those ones that my grand has like 12 grandchildren and she'd read it to every single one of us. And it was just a story we kept going back to. So some really amazing, you know, things that you mentioned there. Um, also in terms of like growing up, was there any actors that you enjoyed or any programs that you enjoyed watching that kind of, made you feel that that was something that you wanted to do? Um, yes. Uh, I was a huge, huge fan of, well, I'm a Brit by nature, so I loved Alec Guinness. I watched The Horse's Mouth, The Man in the Flannel Suit, and uh, the, the, the Lady Killers, and all those, uh, the Over the Hill Gang, and all those, those, those movies, along with Peter Sellers and Sidney James and all those, and I... I fell in love with them, and that's what, that's one of the things I just wanted to be like them. And uh, uh, Christopher Lee, when he was doing Dracula, he was the coolest Dracula. I don't care what anybody says. He was the, he was Dracula, as far as I'm concerned. Bella Lugosi, pleh, suck eggs. But, <laughs> I mean, he was good, but, but, but Christopher Lee was just amazing. But yeah, so there are people like that. And, and and since that day, I've come to admire a lot of actors. I admire Gary Oldman. I think he's brilliant. Uh, uh, Mark Reinance just blows me away completely. Um, the the uh, There's a, a, a black actor who was... Uh, da, 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 starts with a D, did uh, Macbeth, the play Macbeth, uh, or the movie just recently. It'll come to me. I, I'm, I don't know why, but I have a, I've been, I've been forgetting names. If I don't, uh, if I don't say them a lot, I'll, I'll forget them. But uh, he was brilliant. Um, yeah, there's lots of, uh, lots of actors who I admire. Um, but those ones really inspired me to go forward. That's amazing. And, uh, you know. Mm, thank you so much. And that's amazing. And just going through kind of what we've researched in 2001 and 2002, you won the Gemini Awards for Best Supporting Actor in a Dramatic Series um, for Cold Squad. And yes. I guess my question is, what was it like to win these awards? Well, I'll tell you what. Always mention your wife <laughs> in your presentation <laughs> speech. Take notes, Jamie. <laughs> because if you don't, you're a dead man. Oh. So I made that mistake in my head. I'd never been, a, I've never won an award before. And I won the award for Best Supporting Actor in a Series. Um, uh, and they flew me out to Toronto and there was a red carpet and all the glamour and the glitz and dressed up and just looking fabulous and... It was quite something because I got on stage and I thought I wanted to thank everybody in the world. And I said, well, you got me. I don't have a speech. So here we go. Um, I never thought I'd win and um, I won. And I'd just like to thank everybody and, uh, and thanking everybody. I forgot to thank my wife. And I said, oh, and my, no, too late. Off to go. The music started. So I went back and picture taken and all that. And it was uh, really quite exciting. And I took it home. And the funny thing is I'd, I got on the airplane and my I had my Gemini Award in the bag and it went through the metal detector and this, the lady at the TSA, the, the, the airport security, she holds it up and she goes, what's this? I said, it's an award. She goes, and she holds it, what's this? What's this? Who is that? What is this? And I said, it's an award. It's an award. I won an award for acting. Acting. I said, yes, acting. Oh, okay. 
put it back in the bag. <laughs> and it went through. It was quite funny. And then the next year, the next year, I won again. Best actor for the same show. And this time I was ready. I thanked my wife twice. <laughs> Once for the one I missed. And uh, took my mother. And my mother was very excited. And uh, we went out to Toronto again. And it was a big schmuffle. And it was a way better. Because this time I remembered my wife's name. So it wasn't miserable. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And it's so, it's so funny. There was, a, there was one actor who I was up against. Who... who who he looked at? Uh, he looked at uh, this actor. I don't know if you know the actor Brian Cox. Do you know Brian Cox? Was that from X Men? They're in the X Men. Movie? Yeah, he's in X Men. Yeah. He's in um, what's the other one? He's in the uh, the uh, uh, that, that movie with uh, Demi Moore, Long Kiss Goodbye, or Long Kiss Goodnight, and a few. He's he's been around forever. Mm -hmm. The Bourne Ultimatum. The Bourne supremacy all those born movies he was in those anyway he was sitting there and this other guy with they were in the in, in the lobby just waiting for things and this other guy who i was up against looked at brian and he goes <laughs> it's like how did this guy win twice in a row and i said well i guess i just won <laughs> no <laughs> But um, no, I just I I thought it was kind of mean spirited that he did that. But mm. anyway, it was uh, it was very exciting. I just I loved it. I love the glitz and glamour and all that. But you know, with that in a quarter, you can call someone at home. <laughs> it didn't help me do anything. I mean, no, I take that back. The first one, the thing that I thought was very exciting is uh, I was uh, doing a movie and I was up for a movie in in. Um, Winnipeg and uh, they said if he wins the award tonight he will be cast in this movie and I won so they cast me in the movie so I was a lead in the film and that was great so and that was a movie called um, Cowboys and Indians oh wow that's amazing oh it was uh, it was a great with Adam Beach and Gord Tatusis and myself and it was about a, an Indian chief who got shot and killed by a police officer, uh, unarmed. And it was a big scandal. And um, the, uh, I played the uh, chief of police who oversee the whole thing. And it was, it was quite a, it was quite a, it was quite the drama. Anyway, so I did that. And uh, so that's one thing about it. But the, the other was that yeah, I worked. You know, I've been working all my life. I've been working for 43 years, 44 years. And uh, done lots of shows and lots of cartoons. And, uh, I just I just love it. That's amazing. Love it. That's amazing. And, you know, your love for what you do definitely comes through in your performance. And, you know, I honestly believe that you deserve every single award that may be coming your way in the future and every single award that you've won in the past and oh, I guess you. you're welcome I guess go, like keep on to the topic of awards both of the awards that you won were for dramatic roles and would you say yes. that dramas are your favorite genre to act in or are there other genres that appeal to you that you like messing about with well to be honest with you I love drama drama's fun it's easy um I I, I like it Comedy, I find, is is uh, really fun and challenging to you know to stay on top of it. That's why I loved. I jumped at the chance for Scooby Doo. I thought it was hilarious. I had so much fun with that. And uh, I done a, I did a few comedies. I did that um, uh, Max Max Two, the movie called Max Two, Bad uh, uh, Christmas Story Two which were comedies, and I had lots of fun. I really enjoy comedy. But uh, people look at me and they go, he's not funny. He's drama. <laughs> so they never cast me in comedies, but I have been cast in a few comedies, and uh, and uh, I love them both. I love I love drama for the, uh, for the acting stretch, and I love comedy just because it's, it's 
great physical work. It's hard. <clears throat> and lots of fun to get it. You know, when you when you hit the right notes, it's just killer. But I've, I've done a few comedies in my day. That's amazing. It really is. And not just that, but you've also worked on different platforms. So you've done a lot of live action movies, but also a lot of animated ones as well in voice acting. Do you have a preference when you're looking at an audition process or do you enjoy doing both equally? Well, it's a, see, the thing is, is, yes, I do enjoy doing both equally, but I enjoy them for different reasons. Um, the thing about working on film is I love the technical aspect of filming. I just love it. I love every, every aspect of making a movie. It's, it's like to an outsider, when you walk onto a movie set, it looks like organized chaos, but it's not. Every single person on set has a very specific job. And when they do that job, they, it all works. It's a very organic process. And I love, you know, the, the lighting and hitting the marks and making sure you, you know, you, you stay within the lines when you're coloring, you know, and it's basically, that's what it is, is staying in the lines. But uh, yeah, that whole aspect and working with friends that I've worked with over the years, you know, some of these film crews I've worked with over 30 years, you know, and it's just like being at home with the family, you know, when you're, when you're working on these things. And like Cold Squad was great. I was on there seven years. And I was on uh, the Stargate for several years, like four years, I think. And I had worked with those guys on MacGyver back in the 80s. <clears throat> Twilight Zone, and or uh, not Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits. And, you know, we, we, it's like you have history with these people. And you've been through thick and thin and, and lots of fun stuff and golf tournaments and whatnot. Animation, on the other hand, to bring a character to life off the page, just take it off the page and make it alive and make people care about it is the, one of the greatest challenges. And it's really hard to do, but it's so fun. When you get it, it's just riots. I just finished a series of 50 episode um, uh, cartoon series that I can't talk about, unfortunately, but I, I, I can give you one line just as I'm, there's only one kind of monster in this world, children, and that's the dangerous kind. <laughs> that's just, amazing. Oh, no. oh yes, <laughs> it's very wild. And it's quite a lovely character, and I just adore him because he goes all over the place and it's just so much fun. And uh, so that's coming out. And you'll see that coming out probably in the fall. Um, I, uh, I did um, several movies this year. Did a series called Day of the Dead, which is a, my first my first time being a zombie. Oh, no, my first my first time in a zombie movie or a zombie series, and I, it's kind of comedic, kind of fun. And then I've, I've been doing a series called Tribal where I play the head of the Justice Department and mixing First Nations uh, tribal police with the Metro Police and all the problems and, and whatnot that ensue with that commingling. And uh, had a wonderful time on that. Some of my best work, I think. And, you know, the, uh, I had a, did a, a, a Valentine's movie, Fishing for Love, where I played the fishing boat captain out on the island and then did another one called... Oh, what the hell was it called? Oh, quarantine, where this guy is uh, is being chased by this madman, and every time he gets close to somebody, the madman kills them. So he's forced to be alone, uh, confinement or something like that. And then I did another one called uh, All Is Bright, which was a Christmas Hallmark contest movie, and. And I just did another one called Colorblind. It's coming out soon uh, about uh, racial injustice and and race relations with uh, with the black community. And uh, I play a, a really nasty racist guy who finds finds uh, himself as the movie develops. He develops this relationship, and they becomes less and less and more and more of an ally rather than rather than an enemy 
So that's good. And that's it so far. But uh, not a lot, but uh, I, I, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's fun. Oh, I know. I got another one coming out with uh, uh, Peter Dinklage. You know that guy? The little guy from yeah, Game of Game Thrones? Of Thrones um, yeah, Avengers. Game of Thrones. Yeah. So I, I just did a movie with him and Shirley MacLaine. And Matt Dillon and uh, and uh, Dan uh, Danny Glover. Uh, uh, we call called American Dreamer, and it's kind of a comedy. And it, uh, we shot it uh, uh, l last year in um, in Victoria, over on the island, Vancouver Island, and uh, that'll be coming out soon as well. And it looks like it's going to be fun. That sounds amazing. And I think it's fair to say that you come across as so hardworking, like you've done over 400 roles. And I know you're saying that's like a 40 year career. So the average is like 10 things a year that you've been working on, 10 different projects. And that is incredibly substantial. And throughout all those, you know, 400 and something roles, is there a particular character that you've portrayed that stands out to you as one of your favorites or even a particular line from Ben a character that you think really stands out to you oh my uh, my my favorite character you know and a long-term character my favorite character in a series was cold squad my uh, inspector Polichuk, because he just ran the gamut of all different different uh, emotions and relationships with different people and uh and um, he was absolutely uh, a wonderful character and, I, and gave me something that was a challenge I could sink my teeth into and won a couple of awards with him. So he was my fave. Um, uh, Colonel Chekhov from uh, Stargate was always great fun because, you know, you got to speak with the accent and they got to speak Russian all the time, which made me so happy. You know, it doesn't happen very often, but... Uh, it was, uh, that was good. Um, my character on, uh, on, um, on Tribal uh, was uh, always a gas. He was uh, very by the book, very stern and, you know, always a little crooked. <laughs> you always have something going on in the back, in the back room, making back room deals and so on. But uh I liked him. And as far as cartoons go, I love the character of Grounder. I love the character of Dr. Robotnik. I loved um, He-Man and, and, uh, and uh, Optimus Primal, uh, extreme, extreme Dinosaurs, you know, um, Bad Rap, the character called Bad Rap. I love him. He's so great. You know, he's always being a bad guy. And um, you know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, when I think about, it, I've got you know almost two thousand cartoon episodes out there, uh, as well as you know the other you know the projects and things. And um, when you think about it, it's it's really hard to pinpoint one. But there are some that are uh, as of the ones I've just mentioned uh, were were the ones that stick out in my mind. I just love them. And oh, speaking of Scooby Doo. Inspector Grimes, uh, 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 Vice Principal Grimes, was a pretty hilarious character. I get to play with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you've mentioned, there's just so many that are instantly jumping out to us. Like, I think Rihanna's got the Optimus Primal figure in the background. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. And, of course, one of my absolute favourites has to be Dr. Robotnik. I remember coming back from school as a child and watching Sonic Underground. So I just wanted to ask, what was, how did your casting in Sonic Underground come about? And what was your opinion on how the show ended as a whole? Well, <clears throat> what happened was I played the character of Grounder, but I played a lot of other incidental characters throughout, throughout the show. But I loved that character because he was just so adorable all the time. He was just so cute. And uh, we got to improvise and uh, play around, and, uh, and and Phil Hayes, who played the other character Scratch, Phil and I used to ad lib off each other and 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 crack wise, 
And I used to fill in for, um, for Long John Baldry when Baldry was out on tour, because a lot of times he could not make it to the sessions because uh, he was a, he was a rock and roll star, right? And um, so I would fill in for him. And I'd just say, I hate that hedgehog. Scratch, round up, bring him on mm. the perambulator. We will destroy this little rodent once and for all. <laughs> Only the finest. <laughs> I remember that stuff. Some of the lines. And uh, when John was unable to do the show because he was out in a world tour, they uh, cast me as uh, to replace him in, uh, as, uh, as Dr. Robotnik. And that's what I did for that whole season. <clears throat> and it was, oh, God, it was fun. Because we used to, we used to laugh and laugh and laugh all the time, and a lot of times it was only Phil and myself who were in the room, and I could crack Phil up so easily. I just do this. I just go like this. What? <laughs> and he start. So what are you doing? <laughs> don't do that <laughs> he's making me laugh <laughs> and there we go and, and the director go Eric leave me alone I'm not doing anything I'm just standing here <laughs> standing here waiting to do my line if he can't control himself that's not my problem <laughs> you bastard you bastard because <laughs> he was standing right beside me in the studio right it was pretty funny. They used to <laughs> torment the hell out of them. But uh, yeah, see, the, the, the characters like that. The other one with, that I that I really liked was Hack. Remember Hack and Slash from Reboot? You ever watch that show, Reboot? It's, uh, it was the first CGI favorite. cartoon. Huh? It's my brother's favorite. My brother's sitting off to the side listening. <laughs> He's a huge yeah. fan of yours. Well, I played, I played in that show. I played Doc Fingers. I played Doc Fingers, I played Hack, played Turbo, uh, Cyrus, who else? Okay. Al the waiter. What? <laughs> he goes, I made digits. Yeah, Mega Bite is going to kill us. <laughs> you know, and uh, said, and, and, and Hack is going, push the button. I don't want to push the button. Every time I push the button, something bad happens. <laughs> Mega Bite is going to hold me. Fly, little one, be free, be free. And uh, oh, just love that show. And I used to fill in for Tony J as well. I just, my, what a delightful little sales sprite you are. Hello, Bob. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was so fun. It was so sad when Tony died. But um, yeah, so the, 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 all those guys, those characters, that, but, but Hack and Slash were so great because we would do the scripted lines for the show and then we do improvised lines and we'd improvise scenes. And a lot of times they left the improvised scenes in because they were so funny. <laughs> and, uh, and it was great because we got to play like that. But there you go. So it's cartoon world. I just adore. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That was absolutely incredible. Yes. I had a bit of like my whole childhood restored there. That was <laughs> phenomenal. Thank you so, so much. Um, no worries. So I guess we've spoken a bit about theatrical movies and we've spoken about television shows, but you've also done a handful of, I suppose they're called made for TV movies. Oh um, yeah. One being the client list movie. And so my question about that is what was it like to work with Jennifer Love Hewitt? Jennifer Love Hewitt? You mean Jennifer Love Hewitt? <laughs> the most beautiful woman on the planet? Oh my God. We had so much fun. I love working with Jennifer. She had, I had a photograph of her and I, and she was in this filmy negligee. And I said, can we, can we have a photo? And she goes, sure. And I went, oh, 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 oh. don't get too close to me, I'll die. <laughs> She was so fabulous, and um, yeah, that was a, I didn't have a huge part on it, but it was uh, 
<clears throat> it was the pilot episode, I think, of, uh, of that show, The Client List, that went on to be a series. And I was, uh, I was one of the, uh, the dads who used to go for his afternoon delight, as it were. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she was a, a consummate, consummate professional, just a lovely, lovely woman. I really enjoyed working with her, I gotta say. I mean, there's not too many people that I haven't enjoyed working with, um, but I've, I've worked with some some total babes, I'm telling you. I, <laughs> I, I worked with Farrah Fawcett, with, uh, with uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, with Ann Archer, with Ann Gillian, Maria Conchita Alonzo. Who else was in that illustrious group? Oh, Vanessa Williams. I did the show with Vanessa Williams once. So I, I got to hang out with some pretty awesome women, I got to say. <laughs> and, uh, and, and had some great scenes. Well, I had a, some, some great scenes with Farrah Fawcett. And I remember the director going, you know, you guys look like you're married. And I said, I wish. <laughs> She was so wonderful. I spent three months with her. She was so wonderful. Just love her. Yeah, so, no, television movies are, they're fast and furious. I've worked with a lot of great people. I worked with Judy Davis and uh, Richard Benjamin and some of your sci-fi heroes, like from the, the guy from, uh, from Battlestar Galactica. Uh, I've worked with, um, oh, God, I cannot remember. There's just so many. But I worked with a lot of different people and, and fabulous times. <clears throat> Some not so fabulous, but others are like, I got to work with, with James Coburn once back in the day. Remember him? I don't know if you remember James Coburn. Schlitz, malt liquor. He was in the, a movie called, the original movie of uh, Magnificent Seven. And Armand Flint. He was Armand Flint. And I uh, worked with him. Uh, sliced alone. Um, who else? Oh, I hung out with Telly Savalas. Worked with Leslie Nielsen. Um, I, I don't think there's too many that I haven't worked with. Uh, David Duchovny. Um, just I, I I I really can't remember all of them honestly. But uh, I worked with a lot of different people. And I'll see a movie that I've that I've done, and I go, I was in this movie, and I go, Oh yeah, you were in this movie. <laughs> I mean, there was one, there was one TV movie that was quite fun, uh, uh, called Three Weeks, Three Kids, and I swore up sideways and down that I had never worked on this movie. I have never heard of this movie. I'd never knew knew, and then. One day, and the guy and the guy who directed, he goes, "No, you worked with me in Three Weeks Three Kids." And I said, "I did not. I never worked on the movie." He said, "I'm telling you, you worked on the movie." And I go, "Okay, well, I don't. I just don't remember it." And then it came on like four or five months ago. It was on TV, and uh, I had never seen it. And there I am. I'm in the movie, and I'm like, "Oh, this is had a good part too." I'm <laughs> I, I don't know why I don't remember this movie, but mind you. That at the time that I was making, I was working 150 days a year, which uh, is a lot of is a lot of days. Doesn't leave it, you know. I've been, you know, working. There were sometimes I was working seven days a week. You know, I worked with Ray, Ray Liotta three times. Uh, we did uh, several movies together, which was fun. Um, yeah, lots, and it's. I, I can tell you the, the, the thing about TV movies is you've got to be on your game. You've got to be fast and furious because they, they shoot in 12 days or 14 days or whatever it is. And if you're not on top of your, 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 your stuff, if you don't have it, it can be problematic. So you want to, you want to go in, shoot, and get out. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean to say you're, you're throwing it away or anything. You're not. I mean, you're giving it your 110%. And the whole thing with TV movies, you have to be 110% prepared 
and ready to roll. And I found that uh, I had an interesting uh, conversation with a director who I worked with many years ago in, in, the, in the prairies, um, who had said to me, he says, you know, I have always wanted to say this, but you came and worked on my movie and I cannot tell you what it, a delight it was for you to work on my movie because A, you knew what you were doing. You knew what the process was about and you made it so easy. I didn't have to do anything. It was just so great. So thank you very much for that. It just came out of the blue last night. I was sitting at a restaurant with my wife having Valentine's Day dinner and he came up and that's what he said. And I thought, well, that's pretty nice. I had no idea, but thank you very much. But uh, that's what I do. I, I, uh, I always give my all to everything I do. That's amazing. And I'm um, sorry about what just happened there as well. The UK internet isn't always the best. It looks like Rihanna's dropped out of the call. Um, they might rejoin, but... No! Come back, Rihanna! <laughs> I mean, I'm, I have spoken to them. They said that there may be three or so minutes while it reboots, so I guess we'll just do the next yeah. couple of questions and hopefully... Oh, you call it back! <laughs> the UK internet isn't oh, always oh, okay. the most oh, ideal thing in the my world. Brother, my brother lives in London, okay? in, in Hammersmith. Well, he lives in... Uh, uh, um, he lives in Shepherd's Bush, right across from Westfield Shopping Center. And oh, there she is. She's back. Hi. Hello. I'm so sorry. We've got really we bad weather. Oh, our, our weather's <coughs> anyway. really bad and it knocked the internet out. Oh, no, I didn't do any of your questions, so yeah. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I try to talk. I call my brother in England and I, I call him usually around nine o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning to get him at home. And it goes like this. We talk in the door. Hey. Boop. Boop. Poor connection, poor connection. Boop, boop. And I'm going, oh, for Christ's sakes, come on, you guys. And it's just because the system, the internet in, in England is overwhelmed because everybody is on it. And you need, and, and on peak, peak hours, like from four to six, it's really hard to have a good internet connection. But late at night, like if you, if you call like eight, nine, 11 o'clock at night, you can get through. But I find with Skype, it's really, really hard to get through to my brother on Skype. And I call him all the time. So, yeah, I understand what it's like. Thank you for waiting for me as well. <laughs> I'm, I, I think also the fact that in England, the weather is just one minute will be sunny, next minute will be snowing, then it will start raining, and then thunder will happen, and they'll be back to being sunny. So. Weather is temperamental. Well, it's it's kind of like here. Like right now, we're having this sunny, gorgeous day. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. If you can see. We're having oh, this wow. sunny, oh. gorgeous, like a, this is a plastic screen. So we're having a plastic, a gorgeous day out there. I live right by the water, by the ocean. So it's right there. And that's the North Shore Mountains over there. Downtown Vancouver is over there. You can't see it very well because of the screen. But um, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous out here. And um, tomorrow it's going to be pissing down rain. So it's the way it works. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, yeah, we have the exact same weather as London almost. Like we had in December at Christmas time, it dropped down to. 16 below, I think, centigrade, which is very cold. And the water in the ocean, the, there was ice on the water, on the salt water. And you don't see that very, very rarely. And a, there's a pond down the road from my house by the museum. There's a big pond. I've never seen it frozen over. This year, it was absolutely frozen over. And all these guys had divided it up into four rinks. So they had the adult hockey game, the kids hockey game, the, the younger kids hockey game, and then the skating rink for anybody who wanted to skate. It was a big pond. And they said, oh, don't skate on it's thin. I said, no, the ice is like this thick. You can't, uh, it's quite safe and you couldn't break the ice. And they played on there every day. And my, my friend, Dan Shea, who's a stunt 
coordinator and stuntman on Stargate. He, he, he's out there playing hockey in shorts. I'm like, what are you, insane? And he goes, no, oh, it's short weather. I said, it's minus 16. <laughs> no, he's out playing hockey in shorts. And I thought that was pretty It's crazy. amazing. You always get the one person who thinks it's always shorts weather. They'll often it's wear always a huge jacket day. with it, but they still have to wear shorts. <laughs> like the yeah. post oh, I know guys. I know guys in the film, in the film crews who wear shorts every single day. Doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, or indifferent. If it's freezing, they're still wearing shorts. Doesn't matter. In the snow. And then we got like two feet of snow, which we haven't had for years. I mean, we've had six inches of snow, which I, I can't stand snow because I have to shovel it because you have to shovel the walk around my house. And as I'm a corner, a corner lot, I have to shovel the front and the other side. And that snow gets heavy after a while. So I get up in the middle of the night and start shoveling it as it's snowing so I don't have such a big load in the morning. And then I have to shovel off the roof. On the roof here was like probably about a foot and a half of snow on the roof. And that was a bugger to, shave, uh, to, to get all that stuff. So, yeah, so we have the same weather. Anyway, more questions. I know you have questions because you're sitting there going, hmm, <laughs> does he ever <laughs> shut up? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, you mentioned a lot of your different acting credits. So we just can start to imagine how busy your schedule must be. And has there ever been a role in a movie or a TV show that you've had to turn down, down that when you do, you're just like, oh, I really wish I could have done that one? Yeah, Superman and Lois. <gasps> I had to turn that down, <sighs> which was pretty sad. But they just not, they, because I was doing Day of the Dead, they could not make the schedule work. And I was going to play the mayor of Smallville. But it looks like the mayor of Smallville never really got any traction. So I think I made the right decision. But I really wanted to be in that show. Uh, uh, but I couldn't do it. Uh, what else? Any other shows that I've turned down? Oh, I turned down a, a movie with Sandra O oh once because I didn't want to play it a, a um, abusive John um, and I, I'm glad I didn't play that movie but it turned out to be a critical success but I don't care I just didn't want to have any part of it but uh, not really I mean I, I think I've, I've, I've had some pretty hectic times I've actually once shot three productions three different productions in one day Wow. where I went in at six o'clock in the morning say hello to my little friend <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh. that's awesome that's my mini my mini optimus but um yeah I was uh, shooting a, a doing photography for a movie in the morning at 7 a.m finished at 10 ran off to shoot a couple of scenes on cold squad finished at four, then ran off to do a show called First Wave, what was it called? First Wave sci-fi show, and shot that at night. That made for a very long day. Uh, I've had a, a time where I was shooting a movie called, I was shooting a movie called Unforgettable with Ray Liotta. And um, it was night shoots. And it was, I didn't want to lose it. And, and I, but I saw, so I'm going to shoot it. I think I can make it work. But I was doing cartoons seven days a week in the morning. So I would work from eight uh, until, until three doing cartoons. And then I would get in my car and I'd ride like a bunny downtown and shoot this movie called uh, Unforgettable and we'd shoot until four in the morning and then I'd rush home sleep for a couple of hours get up and be there at eight o'clock at the studio to record cartoons all day and I did that for two weeks Wow! and I was a basket case at the end I was incoherent we couldn't uh, 
couldn't talk to me, couldn't do anything to her. Oh, no, that was not two weeks. That was a week and a half, about a week and a half, where I, uh, I just I was averaging like three, four hours sleep a night. And that was crazy. We got so bad that I'd be sitting in my chair like this, waiting for my cue line. Fast asleep. Wake up. What? What? Oh, yeah, sir. Okay. Did that. And... But there was a time I was working seven days a week, and it was a bit maddening, a bit maddening in the 90s. And um, now I'm, you know, so I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be 70 day after tomorrow. So my, uh, my uh, seven days a week days are pretty much over. <laughs> I'm not well, doing that anymore. Happy birthday for that. Yeah. Yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> yes, I'll be birthday on Thursday, Thursday, February 17. That's my birthday. Big one, 70. Ooh, I, can't, I cannot believe I lived this long, but I did. And I'm actually doing pretty good, I think. So I'm just hanging in. I mean, I forget names on occasion. Forget, you know, titles of movies and stuff like that. But they seem inconsequential. So I just don't, if I don't think about them, they're, you know, I had a sight out of mind. Well, that's what they are, a sight out of mind. But, um, yeah. But uh, there's not very many shows that I regretted not doing. Uh, very few of them. Most of the shows I've done, I've, I, don't, I don't regret doing any of the shows that I've done because I've, all, I think of, all I think about is I did my best and I put my best into that work. It doesn't matter. I never go, this is a shitty show, so I'm going to do a shitty performance. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, that's amazing. And, you know, I guess moving on to, like, from all the shows that you've done, you've appeared at several Comic-Cons over the years. And have you had any memorable items that fans have asked you to sign? Because there's some celebrities who have had weird and wacky items <laughs> that people wanted well, to sign. Well, um, the weirdest one is someone asked me to sign their boob. Mm. I know, I know, it's terrible. But they asked me to sign their boob. And uh, so that was a bit odd. And that was in Birmingham. <laughs> 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 and um, I've signed uh, I've signed uh, uh, stuffed animals, signed somebody's jacket, hides, um, hats, lots of hats, but not really a lot of weird. The only weird one was the boob. That was a bit strange. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because he wanted to tattoo it on the boob, and I went, "Well, that's." weird but oof, mm. i don't care go ahead and the other thing that people ask me to sign their toys when there's no surface to sign on so you're trying to sign on sign a toy in this little tiny surface mm -hmm. and you go, i think i can do it with my laser engraver there you go but uh yeah no sign lots of stuff lots of books uh, what amazes me is people bring uh uh, CDs like video uh, CD uh, movies you know video discs and they bring me the most obscure movies uh, to sign that I was in that I can't you know that I've never seen I've never seen the video but there they are and so I signed them and I thought that's bizarre I had somebody sign I, I had to sign my uh, I, I think it was my first no somebody sent me my very first cartoon Ooh. called uh, Hiawatha. And apparently it's on YouTube. And uh, I play several voices on the cartoon, including Hiawatha and Hiawatha's dad, which is kind of bizarre. But um, that was my first cartoon. I'd never done it before. And it was back in 1980, I think it was 83, if I'm not mistaken. In 1983, so long time, but it showed up just like two weeks ago on the uh, on the, on YouTube. So I went, okay, cool. But uh, you know, no, I've I've signed toys, I've signed shoes, pants, hats, shirts, uh, magazines. Uh, I had someone 
asked me to sign a torn envelope. And I said, what do you want me to sign a torn? Well, I just want your signature. Oh, are you going to forge my name? He said, no, 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 because I didn't have anything for you to sign. <laughs> so I went, okay. But there you go. Uh, I guess we're going to move on to a bit of a different topic now. We've just spoken about boobs, and now I guess just <laughs> briefly touching upon your history of Scooby-Doo. Um, my question would be, did you watch Scooby-Doo growing up at all? Uh, the, 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 the movie itself? I guess um, uh, the, the older I, movies or the, the cartoon I used to like, row, 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 row. Hey, Scoob. Hey, Scoob. What are we going to do? <laughs> but we're for those rotten kids. <laughs> they were always the same. I love the mystery band. It was, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a great cartoon. I mean, you got to remember that when that cartoon came out, I was... I think in my twenties. So I wasn't a big cartoon watcher back in that time, but I watched it a couple of times and uh, it was quite fun. Cause I remember Casey Kasem played, uh, played on it as uh, I think he was Scooby. Yeah. I'm um, not sure. And I guess yeah. on that, that you were saying those, you know, the from the roles that you did see in the episode you did see, was there any characters from the cartoon that you ever thought that you'd like to do a voice for? Well, I liked, I liked, um, what's his name? The guy with the, who was, who owned Scooby. Shaggy. 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 Yeah. I oh, like the way he did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I amazing. Yeah, you know, I liked that. I, did, I, I thought I could do that. I could do that voice. Yeah. <laughs> but he was so good. I mean, that guy who played him. Shag was just so good. It was very funny. Actually, they were all brilliant. The um, uh, the girl who played like the redhead. What's her name? Do you have a picture of her back there? Oh, Daphne. Yeah, Daphne. 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 She was marvelous. And Stephen Amell uh, was. Uh, her, uh, the Steve. Robbie. Robbie Amell. What a lovely guy! Have you ever got, have you interviewed him ever? Not no, yet. not as of yet. But there are you know plans hopefully he's, in the future. He's just a lovely guy, a really really nice fellow. If you ever get a chance, really wonderful. Love I love working with him. I love working with them all. The the girl who played um, the Japanese girl, Haley. She played the one the girl with the dark hair and the glasses, Velma. No. The girl, she what a tremendous singer. Mm. She They're has a great incredible. band, huh? They really just are amazing. <laughs> well, the whole bunch of them, they were just fabulous. And Brian, the director, I did, I did actually three movies with him. I did uh, a movie called Max Two, and I did uh, Christmas Story Two, and Scooby. And uh, I just, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd come into town and go, hey, you want to come and do my movie? And I said, yeah, okay. <coughs> oh, <coughs> so I played the bad Santa. <laughs> that was going to so, be my next question about how that role kind of came to be. So was it just that you say you'd worked with them before? Well, here's the thing. I When I went and auditioned for that, I auditioned for that. I was reading for the principal. And I thought I was going to be the principal. And then they called me back for the principal. And I said, okay, well, let's, I'm going to be the principal. And then they called me back again. They said, nope, nope, you're going to be the vice principal. I said, you're demoting me? And he goes, no, you're going to be the vice principal, vice principal Grimes. And my friend Sean McDonald played the principal. He played the, the rotten kids line, which was what I really wanted. It was just the rotten kids. Where are those rotten kids? <laughs> or those, those nosy kids or whatever he said. I would have gotten away with it. But uh, I found Vice Principal Grimes was hilarious. It was great fun. And Lorena, bless her, rest in peace. Lorena Gale, who played the librarian, she was so fabulous. And uh, and she's like that in real life. She was like that in real life, but just a delightful human being. I just loved her. But she passed away many years ago. We have, uh, we now have the, uh, in, in my union, because I'm on the board of our actors union here, we have the Lorena Gale um, uh, Award Achievement Award every year. Uh, wow. Women 
women of uh, women of note, women of achievement of women, and she's a uh, because she was a real inspiration to a lot of people in the in our community and a really hard working here. And her husband was a, a brilliant photographer, and a great director, or a great director. I'm sorry, sorry to say, and uh, uh, a very nice man. And she was so wonderful, and just uh, we miss her so much because she was such a nice lady. But that whole that whole crew, they were just great. I just love them. Yeah, I mean, it's so incredible, and they obviously had so many like lines revolving around that library scene. I think the library scene in that movie is one of the ones that is referred back to a lot of times when people are discussing the film. Um, we yeah. did get a chance to interview Kate Melton, who plays Daphne in those movies. Oh, you she did? was speaking, yeah, and she's amazing. And she was talking about how their audition process was that library detention scene, which, of course, yeah. you play an integral part of in the film. Yeah. So were you ever, like, in that audition process with them at all before, they like, actually shooting it for the film? Uh, no. No, I just went in. Because I was reading for the principal. Yeah. And then they gave me the vice principal. But, but my favorite scene, was it you? You will be suspended forever. <laughs> a lifetime suspension, was it you? And then, and then you, you can't see them, but all they can do is go, <laughs> like big as dickus, you know, they were just, yeah. <laughs> because it, I'm watching you. You know, I did that whole, that whole interrogation when I got them all lined up with the dog and I'm holding the dog. I've got you now. <laughs> like I was having a on the buses mode. I don't know, but no. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, uh, incredible. I guess, um, Rihanna, if you'd like to ask your next question, because I think when okay, um, so you are just amazing, and you're really friendly and pleasant to work, with, like to speak to. And I'm really fortunate that I get to work with Kate Milton. Actually, um, she's gone on to. Uh, teaching people how to act in acting coaching and um oh, she's yes. told me so many incredible stories about you and how kind you are to her on set so I was wondering were there any challenges that came about when playing uh, vice principal vice principal Grimes because you know he seems like the complete opposite to how you are how do you know that <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're an incredible I actor so like it. No, I, uh, yeah, well, the, the thing is, is, you know, nobody thinks they're a bad guy. Everybody thinks they're good guys. They're just being beset on by awful people all the time. I'm actually a kind, generous person, but you are so revolting. Why do you do this to me? See, and that's, and, and my whole thing was, I'm, I'm doing my job. This is my job. It's you rotten kids. You're always messing with my car. My beautiful car. Yeah. Look what you've done to my car. Remember that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. And it got, like, destroyed. Oh, my God. Destroyed my car. My car. No. And I love that car. You know? And uh, I just, I just, the thing about those kinds of roles is you just enjoy the hell out of them. Just, just have fun. You know, because... One of the great things about, about playing a villain, if you play a villain as a villain, nobody cares because it's just boring. But if you play a villain as a nice, reasonable fellow doing awful villainous things, then you care about that person enough to hate them, to loathe them. Like that guy, uh, the guy who played in... Um, uh, the the villain the, the lead villain in the James Bond movie Spectre. Remember him, that German guy. What's his that uh, the actor's name? List something List. He was also in Django. <coughs> and he was also in the in the uh, movie where he played the Nazi. Uh, oh yes, I you think, know who I'm talking about. Yes. Hang on a second, I'll find it. As well. I think they were in X-Men as well, if I'm not mistaken. But when you remember, remember him as the uh, the uh, 
the villain, he was so reasonable and so nice. But he was just the most evil person. Christopher Waltz. Look at Christopher Waltz. He played the most evil characters. But he always comes across as this charming level because he doesn't believe he's evil. It just thinks, you know, it's not like Snidely Whiplash. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> I, uh, and that's what I've always thought is no villain believes they're a bad guy. And I've played a few bad guys in my day and um, it's, it's lots of fun. <laughs> we always have the most fun because they have the best lines, you know? Yeah, there are some but, iconic uh, lines from that movie. They were fun. Oh my God. Just so much fun. Yeah, like my favorite line that you had in The Mystery yeah. Begins was that one like, hmm, did these two act alone or did Ben and Jerry here like do all this? Like, it was just so did incredible. These two people actually, or did Ben and Jerry come along? <laughs> yes, I remember that line. <laughs> oh. oh, I just, I just love going nose to nose and going, hmm? And they're just like, and watching them just going, going I'm not going to break up. I'm not going to break up. I'm not going to break up. I remember doing a play once. I was doing a play called The Passion of Dracula. And I played Jonathan Harker, the photographer back in the 70s. And I remember there was this guy, Brent Carver, who was a wonderful actor. He played Dracula. And I, uh, there's one scene where Dracula comes into the, into the castle. And I'm standing there. And I go to the window. And, I go, ah! and I'm bleeding on the forehead. And it's a Harker! Uh, Dr. Seward goes, Harker, Harker, what's the matter? And I'm standing close to Dracula, and he goes, oh, is that damn bat bit me? Like this. And, I, and he goes, and he turns around and he goes, whoosh, and he puts his nose right against my nose, and he goes, <laughs> a bat? Really, Mr. Harker, you should be careful. <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> he did that, and, he, and I went like this. He goes, Whoosh, a bat, and he puts his nose to my nose, and I went, I rubbed the tip of his nose with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> he lost it completely. Because he goes, a bat, and I went, <laughs> just touched the tip of his nose. Oh, my God. Because they were, they had get me a couple of times, because I, I wasn't an easy corpse, but sometimes I could be, I could be broken up. And uh, I've had some Oh, some delicious moments, but that one was very, very funny. <laughs> that does sound incredible. Huh? It sounds yeah, amazing. Yeah, because Dracula's not supposed to lose his cool. He's not supposed <laughs> to crack up, but but when he, he took, that was it. He was done. We've that we have, that's a great thing about live theater. You know, you can have so much fun on stage when things go wrong. If you if you panic you're dead but if you just go along with it you're okay forever poison jello poison jello <laughs> the gun doesn't fire poison jello poison jello uh, that, that's one favorite Tallulah Bankhead story anyway there you go next question um so I think you touched on this a little bit before but are there any members of the cast and crew from Mishby Begins that you found that you got along with most on set no, the better question would be, was there anyone on set that I didn't get along with? <laughs> and the answer to that is no. Mm -hmm. I loved everybody on that show. And I became great friends with a friend, well, a friend of mine, Jay, who played the bus driver, the school bus driver. Remember he knocked over the pole, the black guy? DJ Jackson, greatest guy. <coughs> I've... Uh, <laughs> we're talking about on numerous occasions. We've been friends for nearly fifty years. That's amazing. And uh, he's a is a great, a great character. Always complaining. I never get any work. I never get any work. I'm broke, man. I'm broke. And I said, Yeah, with your fifty foot yacht, you're broke. Shut up. <laughs> you know. So it's not fifty feet, and it's old. I said, I don't care. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, no, I loved everybody on that show. They were so much fun. <laughs> and they knew they were having a, they were in a fun show and they were having fun. That dog, however, I got to say, very wooden, you know, <laughs> it was just wooden. And it weighed a ton because they had this big stuffed 
stuffed marmaduke kind of, you know, uh, Scooby. He was quite heavy, and I had to hold him by the scruff of the neck, shake with him, and said, "Is this your dog?" Is this your... Remember that? He come out of the come out of the, the the school with the dog like this, and uh, it got to be quite heavy. But they they that's what they, that's what they used to put the um, the CGI in, right? Yeah, we watched the deleted great. scenes, and it does look amazing. What from what they were working with, how they managed to CGI it into this Scooby oh, that it, was there. It's lovely. <laughs> and here's okay. Here's an interesting little tidbit. The school where we shot, I actually went there to junior high school. Oh wow! Whoa. That to that school. So awesome. And the and the vice principal's name before I got there was Mr. Chalk. <laughs> <laughs> wow! It was so fun. I guess it was, it was destined was to be. <laughs> Yeah, but it was uh, it was uh, you know when we opened the time capsule, that was where my my homeroom class was there, right right behind me when we when you were talking about the time capsule. Well, my homeroom class was right behind. Me. That's amazing. That's it must I have went. been so nostalgic, kind of. Nin been yeah, there every day. Nineteen sixty six. I went. I went to that high school in nineteen sixty six, sixty five, sixty six. Yeah, around there, a long time ago. So it was kind of. It was kind of cool shooting a movie at my high school, <laughs> my old high school. Yeah, definitely like going back there and, and conquering the place. It's just so incredible. And I suppose on that kind of note of behind the scenes, do you have any behind the scenes memories that you can share with us or perhaps any favorite moments that you have from working on the movie? Well, one of my favorite moments, as I touched on before, my favorite moment was the lineup when I was, when I was interrogating them about what was going on in the school. That was good. The mayhem in the library was a fun scene. Um, the time capsule scene was pretty fun. I like that. Uh, the when my beautiful car got trashed, when the uh, to the pole got knocked over by the bus, that was fun. And I always remember Brian. He would always our director. He always had a he always had a volleyball in his hand. And he was bouncing the volleyball all the time. When, when all day long, he'd be bouncing that volleyball while he was working. So he'd hold the volleyball like this, and then between takes, he'd be bouncing it on the ground like this, and then he'd hold it when it was rolling, and never lost it once. I thought, hmm, what kind of an obsession is this, Mister? Because <laughs> uh, you know, as I say, I worked with him on three movies. And on the three of those movies, he always had that volleyball in his hand. He was always <laughs> bouncing. It was a, he was quite a character. I quite liked him. Um, other behind the scenes, any other behind the scenes action back there? No, it was, you know, there was not really a lot of stuff. You never really had time for antics. I just remember all the crew were great and, uh, Great lunches, hard to find parking sometimes, but uh, no, it was a, it was it was a, a pretty straight ahead shoot. Everybody was pretty friendly, and uh, we all got along. And everybody did their job, and it wasn't really a, one of those. There was no drama. There was no. I miss practical jokes, and there was no practical jokes on the show, but it sure was fun. Anyway, so there you go. And it did turn out... Pretty boring. So, yeah, it, it did turn out to be such an amazing movie. It really did. Um, yeah. I don't know if you managed to watch it back yourself, but if you did, did you enjoy things like how Scooby was translated? And did you notice if there was any kind of deleted scenes or anything like that that you'd expected to see? No, they were pretty well all in there. I mean, there were, you know, some truncated scenes where, where things were, were shortened a little. But uh, for all intents and purposes, I, I know that um, I don't know of anyone who got, ended up in the cutting room floor, but, uh, but uh, who am I to know? I mean, I've read the script, but I can't remember. The, by the time the movie came out, I forgot the script. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, sure, I, I think I have it here somewhere. I used to have it. But now that it's all digital, I used to, I used to collect script. I collect my scripts. I actually have a script that was signed by Don Amici, Bob Hope, Kevin McCarthy, 
Jane Meadows, Frank Gorshin, uh, who else was on? Bob Hope. Yeah. That was, it was incredible. A, a, all this, was it, it was an all-star cast in a movie called A Masterpiece of Murder. I think it was Bob Hope's last movie. But I played a cop in it. I had like one line, maybe two lines, but I was in there for like a week or so. But it was one, it was very early in my career. And they asked me to come and I said, of course I'm gonna do this. Why not? Look who's in it. And I got to see I got to see and talk with Bob Hope and Don Amici and all these people. I just thought, I'm in heaven. This is great. Because I remember, always remember him sitting in the kitchen and he'd pick up the phone and he'd go, Hey Donna, give me a line on something that. Because he's looking for, for the bookie, you know, calling the bookie to get to get the odds on on Cincinnati football. <clears throat> and he was the most amazing guy. I'd never seen anyone like it in on our days off from the show. He would get on his plane. He had his own plane. He'd fly to Japan to open a golf course. Then he'd fly to the States to open some charitable hospital foundation. And then he'd fly back to work to be at work on Monday morning and, and then work all week. And then on his days off, he'd be flying to all these things. He's going, how the hell do you keep up that schedule? He said, keep me alive, keep me alive. And he was just a little fellow. He was like five, five, eight, five, seven, somewhere around there. But, uh, oh, and you know who was on that show that I really loved? I could have fallen in love with as uh, Claudia Christian. Remember her from mm -hmm. Babylon Five, <laughs> and she was also in a movie about it was it not Mimic? It was a movie about a uh, a parasite where the parasite got in got into her and and to other people, and it would take over their bodies like body snatchers. But she was in it, Claudia Christian, and. Uh, I remember the bass player for the David Bowie band was there, but he was the he was the boyfriend of one of the actresses. I'll, it'll come to me. I just can't remember. My wife produced a movie with with David Bowie. Wow! Oh, wow. Called uh, Mr. Rice's Secret. You can look it up. It's good. And because uh, my wife was a producer back then. And uh, David Bowie came out from England to work on her film, and he was just a lovely, lovely, lovely man. Well, wow, that That's just incredible. sounds so surreal because they are, of course, a legend. Um, now, just being conscious about the time, do you perhaps have um, time for just a handful of questions, please? Yes, you go ahead. Thank you so, so much. Um, so, of course, The Mystery Begins premiered on Cartoon Network. I believe it was the most viewed um, like telecast that Cartoon Network has ever done. So, of course, a yeah. lot of eyes on the movie. And so my question is, have you ever been recognized in public or at conventions, I guess, as Vice Principal Grimes? Oh, yes. I've actually signed, signed the movie, signed the toys uh, many times. And you get that. It's funny. It's, you know, people recognize you in the weirdest things. I've been. I've actually been recognized by my voice alone. Oh, wow. I was getting on a bus. I was shooting a movie over in, on the island. I was getting on a bus to go downtown to the Empress because I want to go to the Empress Hotel for lunch. And I said, "Does does this bus take me to the Empress?" And from the back of the bus, I know that boy. I know that boy. Hey, hey, just a moment. Just a moment. And this guy comes walking up to me and says, you're Gary Chow. And I said, yes. He says, you're, that, you're Gary Chow. You're Optimus. And I said, yes, yes. And he goes, hot damn, I knew that was you. I knew that was you. I can hear you from the back of the bus. And I went, that's you. And then, so I thought, well, here's the end of my quiet bus ride downtown. Because now everybody on the bus is looking at me Oh yeah, you're that guy. <laughs> you're that guy on TV. I've seen you. Yeah, yeah, you're that guy. And I go, yes, okay. Well, hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. So, oh yeah. And he goes, oh yeah. Would you sign my hat? <laughs> sure. Done that, and uh, I got recognized for I, in the strangest places. Okay, I'll tell you a cute story. Very cute. 
one day, uh, I just finished shooting a movie called The Fly, where I'm in the middle of shooting a movie called The Fly 2, which was a, a, a horror movie, you know, sequel to The Fly. And uh, Chris Wayless, who was the director of the film, was also a master special effects guy, won Oscars for things like uh, Rage of the Lost Ark and uh, Ghostbusters and things like that. And his fame, the mo most famous thing was uh, Gremlins. He designed the Gremlins. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm sitting in a, in a swimming pool at a hotel in, in Cannon Beach in Oregon, state of Oregon. And a guy goes, hey, you're that guy. You, you're in movies, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I'm shooting the movie. And, and the kid goes, his little kid, he's about eight. He goes, oh, oh, what show do you do? And I, I talked to some of the shows I did and what I'm doing and um, shooting cartoons. Oh, you, I know you from cartoons. I said, yeah, yeah, that's great. Can you send me something? Can you send me something from the, from the movie? And I said, sure. So I, I was thinking I'll get the photograph or something like that. So he left me his address. I went back to set and I said, Chris, to the director, I said, Chris, is you, do you have anything in here that I could send to a kid for like, you know, a, a gift as a souvenir of the show? And he goes, sure. Hey, you can have this as a cast off. It was an inside out cat. <laughs> a, a reject from the teleportation pod. And the cat was inside out. And it looked pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it was like, it was gross, but it was cool. I said, that's what I'm going to send him. Thank you so much. I put it in a box and taped it all up. And I wrote on the box, caution, monster in box. And then I mailed it off to this kid in Oregon. And uh, the box arrived. And I got this note and it went like this. Hi, I got your I got your 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 cat. It was cool. My mom opened the box and she fainted. I laughed. <laughs> I took it to school for show and tell. A guy offered me two hundred bucks for it, and I said no, your friend Joel. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just sounds That's like so the cutest interaction. To that was to so her. funny. He said to her, his mom opened the box first. <laughs> so real. She opened the Oh my god! <laughs> I can just imagine. And then there was a life cast. They made a life cast of my head for uh, uh, for the movie because I get killed in the movie, right? So they made this mold of my head and a body thing, uh, what they call a life cast, which is like being buried alive if you've ever had it. They stick your head in a bucket, and give you straws and whatnot, and then you, they fill it full of this gel, this kind of gel gum. Then it hardens, and then they cut, they peel it off, and it's your face. And then they make a, a, a realistic head. <clears throat> and it looked very real. It's had a picture of, of my head beside me. And we're, you know, identical twins, right? So I'm I go into the makeup store because I was buying some makeup for his theater production I was doing. And I look up on the shelf and I went, what the hell's that? That's my head. The guy had my head on, on the shelf. And he said, no, it isn't. I said, dude, that's my head. Take it down, have a look. And this is about a year after the show's done. So he takes the head down and I put it side. Uh, I'll do the expression. <laughs> and he goes, holy shit, that's you. And I said, yes, it is. I know my head. I know what I look like. And he goes, yep, that's you. Can you sign it? And I said, yes. So I signed it, put it back on the shelf. Four months later, somebody stole it off the shelf. Now, the things are worth about $10,000. You know, when the, the, the whole process of making it, about 10 grand. So somebody stole it. And then about two months after that, they got it back. How? I don't know, but they found it. So they, they were, and that was a, a strange thing, a life cast of my head sitting in a makeup store downtown. So from the movie. No, oh, that was kind of cute. Anyway. That's amazing. Silly stories. Next question. Oh, that is amazing. So I guess the last question that we have in terms of this section before we start to wrap up 
is that in the sequel of um, The Mystery Begins, The Curse of the Late Monster, there's not a lot, but there is a brief maybe five-minute segment at the start where they're back at, you know, Coolsville High. And so I wanted yeah. to ask if there were ever any talks of you returning as Vice Principal Grimes, even for a cameo scene? Well, at that point, uh, no, because they were shooting it down in the States. They shot it down in, in California somewhere. And uh, the segment was so small that it really wasn't worth their while to uh, to uh, sh- the fly us all down to shoot it there because they'd have to fly me and the principal and other people down there. So they just, uh, you know, continue out from that sequel. And they've done that a couple of times where they use the same high school to the high school front, but different different school and different principals, I guess. I don't know. But <clears throat> no, I wasn't expecting to be in the sequel at all because they were shooting it down in the States and it was a whole different ballgame because I saw the, the next one after that, uh, after the mystery begins or the mystery continues. No, the mystery begins. And then the next one after that was uh, mostly shot out in the jungle or out in the swamp or something. And it was kind of fun too, actually, when I think about it. Yeah. No, I don't know why uh, why they didn't want us in, but uh, but uh, it really wasn't really all that earth shattering that they didn't. But uh, there you go. I'm surprised that this thing articulates so well. <laughs> Somebody gave that to me. They give people give me stuff all the time. I got there's one. Uh, me, my granddaughter. Aww. We're the Aww. greatest granddaughter. <laughs> and then, and this one was cute. All the, uh, this is all for golfing because I'm a golf nut. <laughs> and then someone sent me this because uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's a robot microphone. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? That was incredible. Whoa. Yeah, somebody sent me that. And they, this one's got competition. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they sent me all kinds of things. I got, uh, like, miniature guitars and, uh, well, that was one. Or when somebody sent me a miniature guitar. This one was a, oh, yeah, here it is. So he sent me this. Miniature guitar, still have it in the box, still works. It's a Martin model, but it's actually a Christmas ornament. And um, so you get you get some pretty cool things sent your way every once in a while. But uh, always get a good laugh. And somebody sent me that. I don't know if you can see that on the wall. Oh yeah, the the painting of a guitar. Because I'm a big music fan, and because uh, I've played, you know, concerts at at some cons. I've done some concerts at concerts. One in Birmingham, another one in Chicago, another one in Atlanta. Did one in uh, was I in Australia? In Australia, I used to do online ones as well, and online ones were fun. I like to I like doing those, but I much rather have an audience in front of me. I don't know why, but all our music gigs just went down the toilet with this plague. But I'll be back in England in August. Oh wow! Yes, I'll be in Birmingham at the Birmingham uh, convention, the TF convention, which will be fun. I haven't been in actually ten years, eleven years. Oh, we might need to check that out. That's, yeah, that's nervous, that's isn't it? That's only like, like ten minutes down the road for us. <laughs> where were you? Where are you guys at? In uh, well, just by Blackpool. Yeah, um, I guess it's Blackpool. Blackpool. Minutes, You're just across it's... the way. I'm, I'm yeah. across the country. At the, no, at the, I, at I'm the in pier. Hampshire. Huh? I'm in Hampshire. You're in Hampshire. Yeah. That's where my family's from. They're all from Hampshire. That's what oh. we call it, Hamps. <laughs> No, I'm from. I'm originally from Southampton, and my uncle lives in. Well, used to live in Christchurch, 
Now he lives in, uh, in uh, Bournemouth. My two cousins who are detectives in the London Metro, are, they live in Croydon and, and, south, and south, south London. My aunt lives in Epping. And my brother lives in Shepherd's Bush. And my aunts and uncle live in Bath. And we have also relatives in Northern Ireland and in, um, in Belfast and, uh, and Londonderry. Kind of cool. So uh, I'd love to get, I, want, I, I can't wait to get over there because I got to go and see my family, you know, and all my relatives there. And it's always nice to see them. And <coughs> took my brother a few years ago, like three years ago, I guess. We took him out to, uh, to Wales. We went up to, to Bala, up in Snowdonia, around Snowdonia there. And that was really fun. If you ever want to watch Jet Fighters, because in Bala, in, in, the, in Northern Wales, or Central Wales, that's where they, the British Air Force tests their jet fighter pilots. Mm -hmm. And there's a part on the road, if you go up the highway on the other side of Bala, you go up the highway and you're above the plains, and they come streaking in like a couple of hundred feet off the water. That's and then when you, and you can actually, they actually fly below you. When you look mm -hmm. down, you can see them come zooshing along. You get some great photography there. Scares the hell out of you though. I tell you <laughs> what, my brother and I were sitting there in a, on the campground, a nice quiet campground. And all of a sudden, <laughs> right over our heads. Scared the hell out of us, but very good. Next. Yes, so I guess this is the final section. It's all about your future and plans and stuff. So uh, the first part is, do you have any upcoming projects that you can tease or tell us about? Well, as I said before, I have a 50 episode uh, cartoon series coming up. I can't say anything about it at the moment, but it involves monsters and monster hunters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the, the lead monster hunter. And it's quite fun. So that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, I have a movie with Peter Dinklage and Shirley MacLaine called American Dreamer, which should be coming out soon. Um, other than that, uh, no, I don't have a lot coming out. It's been a, a day the, it's, I mean, do you guys have the dead, uh, Day of the Dead over there yet? The series? It's about zombies. I think we would have, yes, but I'm not familiar with what, if it was, you know, on... It was kind of a comedy. Or if they've, like, it transferred it. Because we've got very limited networks there compared to, to the yeah. US. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that was a, a, a series that I did in November. And the other one was uh, Tribal, but you don't get it there because it's a First Nations show. It's on APTN. Uh, but it's very good. It's a very good series, but that that unfortunately doesn't air in Europe, but it airs in Australia and it airs here, airs New Zealand. Uh, that's about it. I think you can get it on Hulu or something. One of those, one of those um, streaming devices. But no, it's just been um, a lot of the stuff I've done is just local stuff. And right now, uh, it's the beginning of the year. And there's nothing really much happening. I'm I'm waiting on a I'm waiting on a movie right now to, to see if I'm doing it or not. But I'm taking a little bit of a break because I want to uh, get my tooth fixed, sell out. So I'm going to do that. So they have to put an implant in there, and it just uh, takes you out of circulation for several weeks, but. Other than that, I got my you know, I got my two grandkids I'm looking after that are a lot of mm -hmm. fun. Hopefully, get some music going again. Uh, waiting for that to happen. So uh, apparently, the restriction will be lifted in March. Mm -hmm. So music will be able to happen again. Because I sure miss it. I'll tell you what. Anyway, next question. Um. So my final question is, you know. I'm an aspiring actress myself and I followed your career and you've inspired me to want to pursue acting and 
I guess, what advice would you give to other aspiring actors and actresses who are hoping to break into the industry? <clears throat> well, if you're going to, if you want to break into the industry, you must realize several things. First thing, just because you want it doesn't mean you'll get it, which is tough to take, but it's true. Um, everything a producer tells you is true for five minutes, because then it changes, because things change. So you always, you know, never, never put all your eggs emotionally into one basket. You know, um, if you, if you really, really want to get this part, you're just, oh, I want this part. And then they give it to somebody else. <laughs> and you go, shh. And you go, no, okay, moving on. You move on. Um, Always, always work on your craft. Get as natural and as, as as in touch with yourself and your and your 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 acting chops as you can. Sing every day. I sing every day because uh, it keeps your voice in 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 tune and it also allows you to <coughs> find your range. You know. Um, Acting is not about acting. It's about reacting. So you play in the moment. And by that, you know, when, they, when somebody says play in the moment, it just means whatever somebody throws at you, that's what, you're, that's what you work with. That's how you respond. And a lot of times it can be, if you get locked into a certain way of doing things, what's going to happen is you're going to basically figuratively tape, paint yourself into a corner that you can't get out of and to be flexible and to really listen to the, to the world around you and to, to the people that are around you and, and listen to what they have to say and listen to how they say it and watch people. I mean, here's the thing. I used to teach television acting, you know, or film acting. Now the thing about film acting is it, it, you can't lie. It's really hard to lie. If you do lie, somebody will catch you. The eye, the, the, the camera never lies. It will always catch you. And, you. and you know yourself, when you watch a movie, you're watching somebody on the screen and you're going, this is no good. I don't like this character. I don't believe them. Well, why don't you believe them? Because they're lying. And your subconscious goes, that's not true. You're, that's fake. It's bad. It's bad acting. When you're a good actor, you're, you are that person. You feel that. You feel that pain, not the actor, not the character. You feel it. You feel the joy. You feel the anger. You feel the pain. You feel the sadness. You feel all those things. Because it's every character that you have inside you. <clears throat> and I always, I can't stress this enough, is that there is this central core, this crystal core that's immutable and unchanging that is you as your personality. Everything that you do as a performer, I like this person, pff, a little bit of clay. I don't like this person, pff, a little bit of clay. Hey, pff, I don't like chocolate cake. You know, all these things, I have a sore leg, um, my tooth aches. All these things, you add them on and you mold a character around that central immutable core, which is you. How would you react given that this, 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 this set of circumstances? And when you do that, what happens is your, your persona, your character is real. And that, that reality comes across as people, even though you're an asshole or if you're not an asshole, people watch you and they care about you. And if they really, really hate you, that's the best because you're doing your job. And if they really, really love to hate you, is what I'm saying. If they love to hate you, that's because you're doing your job. You know, I've been watching a show called Hovey South or Hort. 
Horton South or something. It's a cop show from the UK. And there's a black actress in it who is after the lead detective wants to date him. And she plots because he wants to get back with his wife. And this woman plots to make his wife hate him so that she can keep him. And I'll, it's going to, ah, no way. I know what I'm doing. Wait a second here. I'll show you the show. But this show is really, really good. And this character is so awful. She's such a despicable human being. Ah, there we go. She's such a despicable human being. And you love her because she's so despicable. <laughs> It's called, where are we? Oh yeah, Holby Blue, that's what it's called. It's a British show called Holby Blue, cop show. And uh, oh man, some terrific acting in that show. And there's some bad acting in it as well, but, but most of it's terrific, I like it. But that's the thing, it's about naturalness. Not be afraid, but don't be afraid to be vulnerable. You know, that's that's the whole thing. Oh, you got a little Jack Russell, eh? Hey? My sister <laughs> has two of those. Buster and Buster and Charlie. And they're crazy as loons. Yeah. <laughs> Tati gets very excited and she always wants in on the interviews. <laughs> yeah, she, Tati loves being around when we're recording and then when the video stops, they tend to know just to run away, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always the way. But that's what I say about, um, you know, and acting is... It's not as mysterious and esoteric as people make it out to be. Basically, you're just a pretty darn good liar, you know. And 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 the irony, the irony is, or the 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 what's the word? The uh, yeah, the irony is, is that you're a good liar because you're telling the truth. You're always telling the truth. Everything that comes out of your face is true. And that's, <coughs> and this goes for everything. When you listen to a, a broadcast, when you listen to somebody on the radio, you know, selling a product, if they don't believe it, you don't believe it. There's a part of you, if you listen to a voice commercial and they'll say, you know, we're Sars tell them, we're proud of our heritage for a hundred years. We've been serving this book, you know, and you listen to it and you go, well, that inspires confidence. Okay, okay, that's great. Yeah, I believe that. And then you got, remember last year when he said it wouldn't happen again, running around the last bit looking for the right Christmas gift? Well, right now, the Stallion's having a free Christmas sale. And you go, yeah, that's just retail. He's just hyping. There's hype. But there there are some that, that you know, like PSAs, you know, um, um, for the SPCA, the RSPCA, or Big Brother, or any of those. You've got to be real. You've got to, because when you're talking on radio, you're speaking to one person. I'm, I'm speaking to you. I'm not speaking to a million people because I'm speaking to that guy or that woman sitting in her car driving to work or driving from work to home because that's where most of their advertising is sold is people in their cars, right? So you got to listen to them in the car. So you have to have a true voice, a voice that you believe, because your subconscious will will your subconscious will go, nope, sorry, don't believe you, and then blot you out. And it goes for everything you do. <clears throat> so that's my whole take. And I've been, as I say, I've been doing this for 43 years, uh, acted in a lot of things, and um, it always seems to hold true to me. And you, and you never rest on your laurels. You're always honing and getting better and better because there'll always come a challenge and you'll always go, ooh, this is a good one. I'm, I'm going to suffer with this. And you know what? I, did you go to theater school? Um, unfortunately, no. I Because of my medical issues, some the, the schools around me wouldn't accept me. But that's actually how I came across Kate Milton um, because I was training, well, I still am training to be a commentator for WWE. And then Kate Melton, um, I came across her and she then took me under her wing and I oh, discovered lovely. a passion for acting. Well, see, the thing is, is that 
in theater school and I went to formal, I went to formal training. I went to theater school and all that. Uh, but you can find these exercises everywhere. We had all these exercises. And at the time I went, what the hell is this stuff? It's kind of rubbishy. What is this bullshit? I just, you know, who are you? I don't care. You know, what are you? I don't care. You know, and, uh, and I, we do these exercises and they seem so pointless, but I've found, and I've used it many times in my career, is that every time you get stuck for something, what do you do? You go back to your foundations. You go back to your basics, you back to your craft. What is this character about? What is this and what is that? Uh, oh, I wish that I'd believe these ads come across those are my face my uh what do you call it you know the face to face with talent the manual i have my renewal just came up anyway but that's what you do is it, you go back to basics you go back and you find who am i what am i why am i saying what i'm saying who am i saying it to and um what are they to me you know that's a, that was the or if i put it down into three basic things what are you saying? Who are you saying it to? And why are you saying it? If you can answer all those questions, then the stuff makes sense. And you'll find that a lot of times, the, the reason why you can memorize a line, let's say, or memorize a scene, is because it resonates and it makes absolute sense to you logically and emotionally, it makes sense. You'll find that it's really difficult to memorize if you don't understand what you're saying or why you're saying it because it doesn't make any sense so you it's like it's like picking random objects out of it and memorizing random objects but if you have a logical progression and the more that you understand your your the more you understand your text the better it is that you can interpret that te that text out loud <coughs> and then it's just easy it just the words just say themselves you know yeah. and it's so wonderful i remember you know in some script i memorized the entire script my entire script on the fly too i memorized the whole thing in an hour and a half because everything made sense and i found that with the you know with my scripts when i worked on on cold squad i would be you know i, I would uh, memorize two three scripts ahead and uh, so I'd always, you know, cursory memorize, really memorize the first, cursory the second, cursory the third. And then once the first started shooting, then really memorize the second and cursory the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. And um, it got to the point where I could rip up, you know, rip into a scene, uh, into a scene. and could do a scene in like 10, 15 minutes. And uh, I remember a, a great, uh, it's a great story. I'm doing a movie called The Show. I'm playing a lawyer and I was with uh, Josh Damel. you know this guy Josh Damel from Starship Troopers Josh Damel, um, Giancarlo Esposito from um, Breaking Bad and Famke Jansen from X-Men we were doing this movie and the director, who was Giancarlo, he came up and he gave Famke three pages of script. He says, I, I want to add this to the scene and make it work. And can you, you know, have a look at it? So she's looking at this, these three pages. And she hasn't really been paying attention to me too much. So she's reading the pages going, well, this is kind of lawyerese. Uh, and he said, yeah. Well, shouldn't the lawyer be reading these? Shouldn't the lawyer be doing this? Um, I suppose. You want to do this? And he had me the script. And I said, sure, okay. And so I took it and I went, I looked at it for about five minutes. I said, okay, let's shoot it. Three takes, got it. Wow. Famke Johnson goes like this. <laughs> what? Well, so what? You, you did, you, you, three pages, and he said, "Yeah, I do so." But that's what that's what you. That's what happens, you know. 
especially if when you do series work, because when you do series work, you get shit like that all the time. So you learn how to basically fire and forget. You get the scenes, you memorize it really quickly, you shoot it, and then you forget about it and move on to the next one. But it was she was quite shocked. And um, yeah, I got three takes. And Jim Carlo said, anytime I'm doing a movie, you're in it. So there you go. I said, thank you. Thank you so much. Because we did a movie like 20 years ago called Five Desperate Hours. And he remembered me from that movie. And he said, you're doing my movie. So I said, okay, thank you. And uh, so I just, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, you know, everybody has a different process. Everybody has a different, how, how to approach this. But the best, most honest thing you can do is just tell the truth. And don't try to do anything. In my classes, I used to teach, I'd have people read their scenes and do their scenes off the hop. I know we're, this is getting pretty long, but I'd do their scenes and I, on the first day and I'd record them. I'd say, great, okay. And then we work the scenes and work it, you know, over the workshop, like three, four weeks or whatever. And I record them again, doing the same thing. And I say, okay, now you see what you're doing here? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you your, your first four scenes, you know, your, your, your first scenes. And I'd show them and they'd be moving around and moving their faces and doing this. And, and then, then on the next scenes, they would be very still and they would just talk, and do their scene and be still. And uh, during, the, during the classes, they would complain. They said, well, I'm not doing anything. And I says, what do you mean by doing it? Well, I'm not acting anything. And I said, no, you're not. You're not acting. You're being. You're, you, you are this person. And, and you don't have to do anything. It doesn't have to feel. When it feels like nothing, that's when you're in it. Okay. And they would not until I showed them the videos. Said, here's your first scene, squirm. And here's what you shot now. And they look at it and they go, wow, it makes more sense. It's it more impactful. The more still you are. Because how distracting is it when you've got all these movements and your hands are waving? How distracting is that? If you watch the if you watch conversations, like actually watch two people having a conversation in a restaurant or wherever, just watch them. And you'll find that 90% of the time their face looks just like this face right here. Your faces, you see your faces? It's like, uh-huh, very <laughs> neutral. You don't see a lot of animation. You just see people talking. And the eyes do all the talking. And it's a very small visual cues. You're just, it's very neutral. But you're getting your point across because your eyes are telling you something. There's just something going on behind those eyes, right? When you're, when you're doing this, we're not looking at you. We're looking at your antic. And that's what makes it unbelievable. But when we're looking at you still, we're looking right into your eyes and you are saying, you know what? You're fantastic. This has been a wonderful afternoon. That was an amazing. Thank you so much. I think that was honestly really, really helpful um, and really insightful mm -hmm. as well. So thank you so much for that. Now, lastly, I would like to quickly ask in terms of upcoming projects and uh, I know you're talking about the event in Birmingham and things like that. Do you have any social media that we can shout out that people can kind of keep up to date with that kind of thing? Well, you can sort of get me on Twitter. I don't, I'm not really a big Twitter follower because, you know, my wife is a politician and anything I say on Twitter goes back on the tax her. So I sort of stay away from Twitter a lot. I mean, occasionally I'll go on there. If it's something that's away from politics, I'll, I'll get in there. Um, I'm on Instagram. <coughs> I'm also on Facebook and I have a Facebook, my own Facebook page. And I have a uh, Facebook fan page where people, a lot of people go and you can see all my 
pictures and film clips and stuff like that. They're all there, but that's about it. I'm not big on, I'm not, I'm not a, a big uh, social media guy. I, I, I watch some of the, um, the Instagram things. I watch them and I go, what is the point of this? You know, I saw these little 30 second videos and usually women with your large bottoms and, and big <laughs> boobs going. <laughs> what the hell is that? TikTok certainly like, different. <laughs> yeah. And TikTok, what what the hell is that? It's exactly what you just said there. The thirty second videos with lots of dancing and yeah, this, shapes. Yeah, and they do this <laughs> steppy crisscross steppy thing. And it makes no sense. Okay, I've seen it once. I don't need really to see it a hundred times. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> they have some fun things. I love the, the machinery ones. I love the engineering stuff. It's just you know, the gadgets, like when they make the machines that make things. I love those. I love the animal ones. I love the um, some of the travel ones I like. I don't like the stunty stuff, you know, like when people do dangerous things and hurt themselves. I don't like those. Uh, they... Um, because I know what that feels like, and it's not fun. You know, if you slide down a rail and hit yourself square in the crotch on the rail, it's not fun. It hurts. If you fall on a sidewalk and you break your shoulder, oh, it's not boy. fun. It really no. hurts. And I, I just don't get those things. But um, I go on a, on occasion because, you know, because there are some people that just demand it. Saying, we want to see what you're doing. <laughs> want to see what's going on write us a letter send us a note so i do that on occasion on my fan page and uh, i'll send out a video on on sometimes but for whatever reason i cannot get my live video on my facebook anymore um i was suspended for making a crack about somebody with a fake account of mine up on instagram a fake very job and so I remember the movie Face Off, and there was a couple of other evil twin plot lines. Where, no, he's the evil twin. He's the one. I'm the real one. He's the fake. Shoot him, not me. Shoot him. Ha, ha, ha. Laugh out loud, laugh out loud. Facebook suspended me for 30 days for that. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I lost my video privileges. I lost all this stuff. And I used to love doing my live videos, but uh, mm -hmm. now I'm not. Uh, I, I can't do them, so. I, I, I was hoping that it would show up. Do they even have live video anymore? Because I look yeah, and I and I look sure. at the the um, the uh, what do you call them? The Facebook and you usually have that live video icon, mm -hmm. and it's there's nothing. It says I can post a picture, but I can't post a video, and I don't understand why not. I haven't done anything. But then when I look at my account at the settings and it says, you have been warned. And I said, I haven't posted anything. What the <laughs> hell am I being warned about? Oh my gosh. We need to like a petition. Right. We need to get... <laughs> yeah. huh? Bring back video privileges. <laughs> yeah. I lost my video privileges, which is hell because that's where I used to do my music live. You know? mm -hmm. I used to do live video. Now I can't do it. And I don't know why. And it's been 30 days, been over 30 days. But they said, you've been suspended. And this was January 6th. Well, 30 days is over. Where's my video? That's so strange. So I'll never make that a mistake again. <laughs> but I was making a comment, a bit like a, a, a comment, and it wrote about a, a film plot line, The Evil Twin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not me. It, I'm me. <laughs> no, I'm me. <clears throat> anyway, but that's it. So those are the those are the main platforms I'm on. I'm on, and my my uh, my lovely friend Candice and Tora, she handles all of my fan stuff on the on the fan page, and um, she takes care of uh, you know posting new stuff and videos and whatnot. And uh, my Christmas annual Christmas special thing that I do every year. And then I, my agent uh, in in uh, Atlanta or in uh, Texas, 
Sarah, Sarah Ramos, she handles all my convention stuff. So. That's all I got for you, kids. <laughs> well, that's Where amazing. Did, Thank where you. Where did the time go? It's like 5.30 already, for God. I know. I'm so sorry. Thank you. You've been so generous with yeah, your time you. today. It's been amazing to speak with you. So well, I guess for the purposes of finishing the video, we'd just like to say a huge thank you to you for your time today. Honestly, it's been incredible to be able to speak with you. And um, the links to the social medias that we're talking about below for people can follow and keep up to date with projects if they're interested will be in the description below. And if you subscribe to the channel for more upcoming interviews. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you Have so much for your time. time today. Yeah. And uh, good luck in your career. Thank you. Go out and be, a, be an actress. Be a dairy girl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever watch that show? I, I haven't gone around to it, but my mom has. The Dairy Girls? It's hilarious. It's all these high school kids in Northern Ireland in the 70s. And they all talk like that. I don't oh, think I can pull like, off oh, the accent, to be honest. Huh? <laughs> I don't think that? I'll be able to pull off the accent. <laughs> oh, it's an, it's an easy one. It's not a problem. It's going to end on a high note. You can do it. I, I know you can. <laughs> 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 that is amazing thank you so much honestly it's been incredible right. and we're sorry to have taken so much of your time but honestly hey, it's no been incredible to be able thank to you. speak with you all right, my so i'll I guess see you at the